After Easy Pass, did you continue to run into Suge? No, I haven't. I didn't see Suge nowhere after that. That I, was it. That I can remember. Oh, besides this, the well after he passed. Because before he died, we and me and my brother end up signing to uh, Outburst Def Jam. Okay. Okay. Because the guys who brought us to him, initially we had a subsid. They had a subsidiary label that was through Ruthless. It was called Toenail Records, you know, slash Ruthless, and then whatever the distribution company was at the time. But we were stuck in contract to them, so I ended up going to the county jail for some tickets or whatever. When I got out, they approached me you know, saying that they want to help me get out, the, negotiate my release from this and signing me to their label. It was a subsidiary of Def Jam called, you know, the same label Domino came out on. Okay, right. Yeah, so we were signed to them. And uh, Easy started negotiating with them to get us back on Ruthless right before he passed away. He was actually going to sign directly to him, but he ended up passing. So anyway, um, because we was affiliated with Def Jam, Montel, Montel Williams or Montel Jordan, Montel the Jordan. singer, he had did this, he was doing a song called Something for the Honeys or whatever. And uh, they called us all to the video shoot. Warren G was on Def Jam at the time. Mm -hmm. So naturally Warren had Snoop come, Nate Dogg, all these people. This is the golf course incident. And I was like our last run in with anybody from Def Row. Suge wasn't there, but uh, I was like our last run in with, with them cats. And what was the, the golf course incident? The golf course incident, basically, when I got there, my brother wasn't there. He was, we came in different cars, so he was coming from somewhere else. When I got there, I see, uh, I'm sitting on the balcony. It's a bar on the second, on the second story. We sitting on the balcony drinking. I see Snoop coming. So Snoop, he's smiling, because me and Snoop kind of already kind of settled things. Like, he was the only dude that I had to the chance to talk to and kind of settle stuff with. So you, you guys talked it out? Yeah, out. we kind of talked it out prior before. So he smiled, he was like, what's up? I was like, what's happening? But behind him, Warren G, uh, I don't know if Das, I think it was the Dub Shack, the Twins. And then Nate Dog was like the last one in the crowd. So Nate Dog, he like he he was the only dude who had a problem with us. Yeah, I heard Nate Dog was like the most gangster one out of Yeah, the pretty much. Yeah, that's what I heard. So he was like Lone Beach. I was like Nutty Block Crip. He was like Lone Beach. I was like Nutty Block Crip, and he just kept on walking. I was like, whatever. I kept drinking my drink. So now I see my brother in the distance, like way down, you know, on the golf course, like walking, looking for us. So I'm running down to go meet him, and they already went back around and went downstairs because they was on the golf carts just riding. You know, everybody high and drunk, so they down there clowning. So I'm going to meet my brother. Nate Dog swooped on me. He swooped on me, but he ran over my foot. So I chased his golf cart. I'm like, you know, I'm behind a golf cart chase. <laughs> so he got out the golf cart and he was like, uh, he was like, what's up? I'm like, nigga, why you run over my foot? He was like, you better get out. I just fired on him. Bam. And when I fired on him, I dropped him. But I heard all of his boys coming behind me, the twins and all them, and I turned around and rushed one of them. And then my brother came over there, and then that's when you see all the madness happen. Like, they edited everything out that footage. It was a big brawl. It was a big brawl, yeah. It was just me and my brother and, like, probably about 15, 20 of them. You guys got hurt? Nah. Well, my brother got hit with a golf club, but other than that, nah. So, have you ever had a chance to work it out with the dog pound? I did. Or the dudes? I did. After that, only with, it was a G homie from 6-0, his name Roscoe. He lived kind of close by me, and we ended up getting cool. And uh, being corrupt is from 60s or whatever. He kind of called a little meeting, but nobody showed up but corrupt and Snoop. Das didn't ever come. Nate Dog never came. So we kind of had that little, you know, powwow or whatever, and everything was supposedly cool. And then after I ended up going to prison after him, my brother ended up making a song with Nate Dog. Oh really? Yeah, it came out on this on a uh, Big C style from Long Beach. He had put a compilation. That's dope. Called Straight Out of Cali, and so it's a song called uh, "Victims of Reality" when Nate is doing the hook. So they end up making a song, and then when I got out, I end up meeting Daz. And you know, everything is everything. So that's dope because I know Daz. We just had corrupt here a couple yeah. days ago. They good dudes, man. And yeah, you know, right. and they everyone's gotten older. People got families. And the, and the thing is, like, we never knew each other to even have a problem with each other. 
You right. know what I'm saying? Like, and you don't realize that when you're young. Right. You're just playing your sides. You're just playing your sides. Everybody yeah. just rolling with who put them on, basically. Pretty much. And you know, they ended up being all right. They ended up being all right. Right. Like, especially corrupt men. Corrupt. I'm probably the closest with really? him. Yeah. Did you see the corrupt interview on Vlad TV? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. You notice how since somebody from the West Coast will say they're the king of fucking New York, they automatically assume we're disrespecting New York. Right. I'm sick of that shit. We don't have a problem with you, New York. Stop it, my nigga. I saw that. I was dying. <laughs> um... Nah, that's, that's a really dope story, though. Yeah. But I, I, that's really cool how it all kind of came together. Because I, I remember when I interviewed Hutch, and I asked him about how easy he felt about Dre Day. The thing about Eric, Eric was a realist. He's like, how some fake motherfuckers going to diss me some non-gangster motherfuckers? Because like, he looked at it from the perspective that, you know, he was the gangster from Compton. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he felt like, okay. And he was like, oh, I don't even know Snoop, basically. In his, in his mind, he was like, I don't really know Snoop, so who the fuck is that? You know? So, so he really was like, really like, who is these clowns really to him? Like, you know what I mean? He he knew like, okay, I know Dre is a cool musical dude, but he not what he's saying. Right. He won't do nothing to me, basically, is what he's saying. Like, and I don't even know who this other dude is. He from Long Beach. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was his that was his take on it. Okay. You know? He gave a fuck, but he didn't really give a fuck because <laughs> Easy was like, I'm gonna get back at him. Yeah, nobody like Snoop, you know. Snoop was, he was the little young cat that, you know, Dre ended up, he ended up riding with Dre or whatever. And, you know, like Snoop, we, we did all our research and homework on him and nobody could vouch for him, for all the stuff he was talking. You know what I'm saying? Like well, being a gangster from Long Beach and all this, nobody, nobody knew this cat. Well, I mean, you know, to be so, fair, no one really vouched for Ice Cube either with all the stuff that he no, said. No, that's true. That's absolutely true. <laughs> Ice Cube didn't bang at all. No, nah, he didn't. You couldn't tell me that when, nah, when, when that first didn't. album came Ice out. Ice Cube didn't bang. Nah. Yeah. Most of them cats didn't, man. Like, most people well, I heard, who's yelling all the stuff. I heard Ye uh, Easy and Rand were like the two criminals Yeah. out of NWA. Everyone else pretty much were entertainers. Yeah, I mean, Yeller really from Compton, but he didn't gang bang. That's what he I'm saying. He grew up in the hood too, but he yeah, didn't but bang. Yeah, he, he wasn't about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You could tell by his his overall man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything else like that. So y'all y'all finally worked it all out and everything. Yeah, else man. Like that. It's like you know, That's it's, you up. know, after Pac and Big died, it's like, is this what we really want to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not worth you know, dying over something over over some damn music like. You know what I mean? Even though at that time, for me, it didn't matter. But th now that I'm older, it's kind of like it's like a silly thing, you know. I got press about Tags G Big Homie. Like, yo, we don't like that video. We don't like uh, something that Dice made towards my man. You shouldn't have said nothing. It's either P Dice or it's all of y'all. Like, we want problems. And as long as he's in y'all squad, we want problems with y'all. Wop said, all right, he gotta go. Fred Rose Star won by default. Keith Murray defeated himself. And I'm up for a rematch right now, anytime. And anybody who think they want to challenge Keith Murray, I'm open for that challenge too.